Hello and happy Sunday! Today is Sunday, August the 7th. August. I'm going to have to get used to saying that. Today is Sunday, August the 7th, and I'm Kelly with ifyouhaveanegg.com. And yes, I know I'm wearing a sweater. I will take it off here in a few minutes. It was super hot, super sweaty when Karen and I walked today, and I'm still wet, and so the air conditioning has got me freezing. Okay, so hello and happy Sunday, everybody. Um, I am Kelly with ifyouhaveanegg.com. Super warm in East Tennessee today. I hope you will give us a shout out that you'll say hello when you get here. If you're watching this later on YouTube, it's just youtube.com. Search if you have an egg. Go ahead and say hello. And if you're brand new, let us know because we would love to welcome you. And hello. Oh, there's Trish. Okay, Trish. If everybody was in the same time zone that Trish was in, let me, see, let me get caught up with you. If everybody was in the same time zone that Trish was in yesterday, she scared me to death because she said, oh my gosh, are we not having a chat tonight? And I thought, today's Saturday, right? Right? Right. Trish, you had me question myself. Okay, so hello to Trish. Hello, Carol Lou. Hello, Linda from Rock Island, Illinois. Let me get caught up with you all. Hello, John from Home Base. Hello, Katie. It's good to see you. Elaine is sneaking in here. Hello, Elaine. Hello, Sandra from Dingman's Ferry. Yep, got lots of people sneaking in. Hello, Kathy. How are the cats doing? Hello. Oh, it's already got, uh, let's see, I already got Elaine. Hello, Marianne from Pennsylvania. Um, yeah, so y'all are going to have to endure the sweater. It's 88 degrees outside at 8 o'clock. Hello, uh, let's see. Hello, Melinda. It's good to see you. Hello, Hattie. So it's 88 degrees outside at 8 o'clock and extremely humid. The humidity is the issue. And hello, let's see. Vicky sneaking in here. Hello to you. Hello, Tag. Um, so anyway, so I'm soaking wet and the air conditioner in here has me freezing. So you'll have to endure the ratty, uh, keep it at work because they keep it so cold in here sweater. Okay. And hello, Lynn. It's good to see you. Today is, um, oh, and I'm so sorry. Trish wasn't feeling well and she laid down and I guess when she woke up, she thought it was Sunday. So you scared me to death, Trish, just so you know. Hello, Lindsay and hello, Deanna. Again, if you're brand new, please let us know because we would love to welcome you. Hello, Mary from Albany, Indiana. It is good to see you. Um, today is Sunday, August the 7th. Apparently, I'm going to have trouble saying August and hello, Carol. Apparently, I'm going to have trouble saying August. This is August the 7th. August. Okay, Kelly. August, August, August. Not another month. Um, and this is chat number 283, and it is titled, How to Find and Use Your Own Strengths. If you're brand new, that means we have 282 other chats like this already posted over on YouTube. That's just youtube.com. Search if you have an egg, and I would love it if you would go over, watch a couple, comment, subscribe. That would be awesome. But we are going to be talking about how to use your own strengths here in just a few minutes. Um, but I wanted to let you know, if in case you didn't hear, Dusty started our day yeah, he started our day out right today and has had me pretty much quarantined from everyone. And I can't wait for the girls at Casey Kitchen Center to get here in the morning and find out what happened. But he got sprayed by a skunk this morning. And hello, Orlando Debbie. Good to see you. Uh, Bo and I were coming around the corner at, at her mom's house, at Casey's house. Alyssa was still sound asleep in the camper. Camper. Yeah, she was still sound asleep. And um, I spotted a baby skunk probably this long, not quite a baby, not quite an adult. Yeah. And, uh, I was screaming at six o'clock in the morning no! as loud as I could. Woke up. No one did not stop Dusty. Bo thought it was hilarious. I guess that I was screaming anyway. So he's quite stinky. He is quite stinky. So we have not gone anywhere today that wasn't outside except for here. And I've got the stench down just a little bit, but anyway. Okay. So that's a little bit of news. The most awesome news, though, is it's finally here. Tomorrow is National Sneak Some Zucchini on your neighbor's porch day. Can you believe it? It's the day that we've been waiting for. We've been talking about it for like a month, but it's finally here. So if you have too much zucchini, tomorrow's the day to sneak it onto your neighbor's porch, okay? And if you're hoping to get some of the zucchini, I don't know what you do. I don't know if you put out a little, yes, exactly, Dusty the Stinker. Aloha, Kathy. I don't know if you put out a little sign that says um, punk me because I want zucchini, or I, I don't know, I don't know what you do to be the recipient of the zucchini, but I'm just curious, are you going to be putting zucchini on somebody's porch tomorrow, or, and hello Arlene, or are you going to, are you hoping to receive some zucchini? So it's finally here, tomorrow is sneak some zucchini on your neighbor's porch day. I'm hoping I'll be the lucky recipient. Yeah, and Debbie says, yeah, she wants to be a recipient, please. Yes, me, me, me too. Okay, I know, and Melinda, it's, just a funny thing. Yeah. So, I mean, Carol Lou, I think, is the one who found it. And hello. Let's see who's sneaking in here. Oh, Karen. Hello, Karen. Um, 
So Carol Lou found it and it was just funny. So we've been talking about it for a few weeks, but it's over tomorrow. So we'll have to wait until next year to talk about it again. Also more good news for those of you who, um, who are diabetic or pre-diabetic, WW has partnered with Abbott Laboratories and they are, they are the makers of the Libra, Libre Glucose Monitoring System. So if you know anybody that has to use one of those or if you have to use one of those, it's the company that makes those. And in a press release, WW and Abbott announced the two companies will work together to allow Abbott's Freestyle Libre Continuous Glucose Monitoring Systems and the Weight Watchers mobile app to share information so that people living with diabetes can see their glucose data alongside Weight Watchers Diabetes Tailored Program. How exciting is that? I mean, I don't know, that just sounds like a match made in heaven to me. If you if you are diabetic or if you're pre-diabetic and if you filled out your, um, when you did your assessment, if you filled it out that way, they are partnering, partnering together. So apparently there's gonna be even more, like I know you can already track your sugar on there. So in the last update, you can go ahead and if you had checked that you are diabetic or pre-diabetic, you can go ahead and track your glucose in there, but it sounds like, I'm not gonna promise, but that announcement right there sounds to me, yeah, and Deanna says that is huge. That is huge. Yeah, I think my mom would have been all over this, okay? It sounds to me like that maybe just like your fitness tracker, maybe it's going to automatically sync. I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. Okay, so that was one press release. And then finally, I um, just wanted to let you all know that the summer challenge that was hosted by Julie over on the If You Have, in the if you have an Egg group, um, it's done. We've ended the summer challenge. She has ended the summer challenge and has wound down for the season. Um, it was a fun and friendly challenge. So there were no real, hello Kim. There were no real, um, I mean, it wasn't a competition. So it was a challenge and it was to challenge yourself. It was not to compete against anybody. It was not a weight loss competition. It wasn't a, hello Sherry from Cape Coral, Florida. This was not a compete against your friend or neighbor or whatever. It was to challenge yourself. And I heard things like, so these are the results, you know, the, these are some of the results that I heard just from the summer challenge. Um, and it was fun and it was friendly. So these were some of the, these were some of the um, results that, uh, that were yielded. Um, I lost two point, not me. Someone in the challenge said, I lost 2.4 pounds. And it was, they were so excited. 2.4 pounds just doing the summer challenge. Another person said, I'm at my lowest weight ever. How awesome is that? Just from doing the summer challenge. Another one said, I'm down a shirt size. Okay, what kind of an NSV is that that you're down an entire shirt size? And I heard another one, my skin looks great. So those were fantastic results from the challenge. She is has just started another one over on If You Have an Egg, and this time it's gonna be a water challenge, and it's gonna go through August and September. She just started it. You can join it, you can join it anytime, and again, it's just a fun way to stay accountable with each other. So if you are not already in the If You Have an Egg Facebook group, surely, maybe, because Carol and Debbie are both here, <laughs> maybe someone will post that link so that you can join. And remember to answer three questions or three easy questions, but if you don't answer them, I can't let you in. So it's kind of like the lottery. If you don't play, you can't win. If you don't answer the questions, I can't let you in, okay? Okay, so that was some news um, for this week. This is chat number 283. Today is August, August, Kelly, August the 7th, and we are closing out the uh, the July topics for WW. So we had one, there was one Sunday left in July. So we were still talking about living flexibly and we will start the new monthly theme next week. Thank you, Carol, for posting that. We'll start the new monthly theme next week, but we were still talking about living flexibly. So whoa, howdy, talk about needing to live flexibly this week. Um, but the first thing I wanna know, were you flexible this week and attended an in-person workshop? Give me a thumbs up if you did, or if you couldn't attend an in-person workshop, were you even more flexible and attended a Zoom workshop? Give me a thumbs up for that. Or did you watch live with us last week? So did you, were you flexible and put off, you know, something else that you needed to do that night? Or maybe you were flexible and did your stretching while we were um, having the chat last week? You know, or maybe you were flexible and did some meal prep. So give me some hearts. Hearts if you attended with us live last week or if you watched it later on demand. Katie did both. Yeah, awesome job. Lynn did both. So thumbs ups for attending workshops or Zoom workshops. And hearts for in person or for live chats or for watching later on demand. Awesome, awesome guys. Yeah, Sandra, looks like Mary did, Elaine. Good job. So here are your Bravo stickers for open. Linda's chair was in a green, Linda's chair was in a green bottom. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's exactly what I meant to say. Oh, hold on. K 
Carolyn is here from Ireland and she's been watching for a few months on replay. Hold on a second. Oh no, she says WW pulled out in January and she misses it so much. So everybody welcome her. It is, Car is it Caroline? Is it Carolyn or Caroline? C-A-R-O-L-I-N-E. So everyone welcome her. We'd love to have you here and we're so happy that you have been watching with us um, for months now. We would love to be your, your meeting, your workshop. But bravo stickers for everyone who attended an in-person workshop or attended online or Yep, is it with an I? Is it I like Caroline or Carolyn? And it's okay because I'm going to mispronounce it anyway. Um, yeah, so there are your Bravo stickers for either going to an in person workshop, attending um, a Zoom workshop, or being here with us. So, congratulations, everybody. So, again, we're finishing up talking about living flexibly. Last week was chat number 282. 282. That's a lot. Um, and we were talking about how to put the F back in fitness. So I told you that last week was going to be about F words, okay? Kind F words, though, because y'all know me. Nothing is coming out of this mouth, okay, that you can't repeat to your mom. So last week, you know, I said it feels like we're talking about exercise, fitness, moving, or some, you know, similar topic like every other month. But it's important, you know, and these things are important, and I have to remind myself of them, too. Sitting for extended periods of time is just not good for you, okay? It's accredited to diabetes, a higher risk for a heart attack. Last week, we even talked about the fact that it could be accredited to um, death, you know, just sitting for extended periods of time. And especially if you're working from home right now, like if you are one, um, hello, Rita, if you are one who has been sequestered to home or if you need to work from home right now or if you've been staying at home, Oh, Caroline. Good. I was right. Yeah. So Caroline says, just think of the Neil Diamond song, Sweet Caroline. And I won't sing anymore. Um, but yeah, so we were talking about moving a little bit more. And remember that last week, WebMD um, announced that it was National Wellness Month. All of August is going to be National is National Wellness Month. And they were talking about ways for employers to encourage people, you know, their employees to get up and move around. I mean, it's that important that they were trying to get employers to encourage their employees to get up and move around, you know, during the day. So, you know, and being flexible with it. So things like being flexible and changing the way you're doing something or when you're doing something or who you're doing something with, you know, or whatever, or being flexible and stretching. So I did some extra stretching this week. I had completely forgotten. I don't know why. So I told you all last week that every night, Dusty and I, and I'm going to do it again, you know, I bend down and touch my toes every night for, you know, an extended period of time to stretch out my legs before we go to bed. But I had forgotten about, somebody reminded me to cross, and I know you can't see my feet, but to cross one foot over the other one and stretch. And man, is that a completely different stretch than just stretching straight down. So, you know, even being flexible like that. So we decided fitness can be fast. It can be something that fast. It can be as fast as getting up and walking out to the mailbox or for us taking an order upstairs to Chris instead of waiting till the end of the day for him to come and get it. It can be flexible. You can change when or how or with who you do something. Um, or it can be flexible in the stretching and the different ways that you stretch. Or And fitness can be free. So you absolutely do not have to pay any money to participate in fitness. It can be absolutely free. And your homework for last week was flex your flexibility. So your homework for last week was flex your flexibility. And um, I wanted you to pick one way that you were going to be flexible in your fitness. And Caroline, you're going to have to tell me how to pronounce that. I have no idea how to pronounce that, but I'm sure it sounds cool when it is said out loud with an Irish accent. So you've got to, I don't know, somehow you've got to record that and send it to me. Um, but I wanted you to be flexible either in who, when, where, why that you were exercising or do something flexible, and here's how you did with your homework. So Deanna has, Deanna always shares like awesome and fantastic things, and she always puts either a picture, a drawing, a journal entry, something with it to make it fun, and it always catches your eye when you're going by. So Deanna and her husband have really flexed their workouts. So they don't normally work, work out in the summer because it's just so stinking hot, and I feel you. I know I'm having a sweater right now, but it's because I'm completely wet from walking with Karen, not from the rain, from the humidity. But they don't normally work out in the summer, but this year they have made screens for three of the gym room windows. They bought a portable Arctic Air fan, and she has been wearing a wet cooling towel wrapped around her head. Talk about being flexible. They, 
they have really worked on this. That is super, super flexible. Carol Lou set her fitness ring to remind her to get up and move every hour, and she said it has really paid off. And it was super cute, the um, picture that she shared because her kitty cat. So it showed, you know, great, you did a great job. You know, her ring had notified her that she did a great job, and her kitty cat was in the background. So we all enjoyed that. And then Katie loves giving, getting a good stretch in every week. Okay, this is not anything that I had thought about. So when, so when I asked Katie, you know, did you enjoy that? Is it something you like to do? She loves it now, and she started to, she started doing um, a Pilates, a good Pilates stretch, about five years ago after recovering from a torn ACL, and she's done it. I'm assuming every week since then. So once a week, she goes for a really, really good, just deep Pilates stretch, you know, to help her, started out to help with the ACL, and now she just really enjoys it. And it's been five years later. So I think that's incredibly flexible. So great job, everybody who did your homework last week. Here are your extra Bravo stickers for that. Good, 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 good job. And good job on winding down whew, these summer months. Okay, this week's topic, though, we're talking about how to find and use your own strengths. So I need everybody to pay attention to me for a second. Everybody put on your listening ears for a second. Okay, I want you to fill in this sentence. So I want you to fill in, to think, if you could turn right now, if you could turn to the person who knows you the best, and like John is here, okay, now I'm finally starting to get warm. John is here, but I doubt he's gonna answer this while we're alive, um, but if you could turn and I do not want to put my sweater over there because dusty stinks. But if you could turn to the person who knows you the best and say, hey, fill in this sentence for me. And the first blank is your name. So in my case, it would be Kelly. You know, Kelly is really, and then some positive adjective. So it doesn't need to be something like, you know, like, I don't know, crabby or uh surly or something like that but if you could turn to the person who knows you the best and say hey fill in this sentence for me my name kelly laura missy whatever your name is is really and then fill in some positive adjective what do you think that they would say what what adjective do you think that they would fill in for you just pop in a couple of comments here so if you're watching with us live go ahead and comment if you're watching this later on youtube it's just youtube.com search if you have an egg Still answer, because I want to see what you think they are. So how do you think that somebody would describe you? Is really, like Carolou is really, Trish is really, Deanna is really loving. Okay, Deanna said loving. That's a good one. So Deanna is really loving. Do y'all see how easy that is? Okay, give me a couple more before we move on to the next sentence. <laughs> caring. Karen is really caring. I would agree with that. Diana says care. Oh, the two carings. Yeah. Diana is caring. Diana is really caring. Marion is really sweet. Melinda is very, is very kind and caring. Those are great ones. Okay. Now, what if you had a coworker or a boss fill that in? So, oop, and Carol Lou is very organized. Sandra has a good heart. So now what if you had a coworker or even your boss fill that in. So what do you think they would say? Would they say that, would they also say that Sherry is very sweet? Would they also say that Marlene is very determined? Ooh, Linda says easy going. That's a great one. Linda's hubby says easy going. Katie, empathetic and hardworking. Those are perfect. Lynn is really encouraging. Those are perfect. Okay, so hello, Deborah. Oh, Deborah from Prince George, Virginia. Good to see you. And Katie, empathetic and hardworking and Rita, supportive. Okay, so the, and Hattie, giving. Those are perfect. Okay, so they might be different if it's the person who knows you the best, at, you know, versus a coworker or a boss, but I guarantee you, you thought of something for every situation. So you thought of something that some someone would say, um, oh, Caroline says that her boss says she's very reliable. That's Perfect. That's a perfect example. So it might be a little different depending on who the person is, but I guarantee you every single one of you all came up with two things and they might not be the same thing. So the person who knows you best might say caring and like Caroline, your boss might say, wait, hold on. I forgot the exact reliable. Okay. So might say, might say that. Okay. It's hard to look inside sometimes and think about what your own strengths are. It's even harder to be honest with yourself about what you're good at. And the most difficult thing is to figure out how that plays into your weight loss and wellness journey. Okay. So let's, ex let's, let's explore some of these ideas. So some of the, 
some of the things that you think somebody would have said about you or you would say about yourself. So if you were described as giving, loving, caring, if those were the top, if those were the top adjectives that somebody used, oftentimes those are seen as weaknesses rather than being strong because we, when we internalize it, we think, oh, okay, well, they said I was caring instead of saying I was strong, you know. But au contraire, au contraire, mon chéri. That is not me. Those are not weaknesses, okay? Having tra traits that are kind and gentle towards others means you are the perfect person to be the most kind, giving, loving, and caring for yourself or for those in your peer group. Um, your best strength may be being a cheerleader for somebody else, you know, for somebody in your meeting or somebody here, you know, on the live or somebody that's, in, you know, in one of our chat groups. Or maybe it's giving meal prep and recipe ideas when another member's struggling. So, you know, you're caring enough to share something with them. If they're, you know, if they're hurting or struggling, you know, and you're caring, kind, loving, you want to share with them. You might be the perfect person for that. Um, and you're the perfect person for the job to help someone forgive themselves because how often do we need to do that um, when they're feeling like their journey isn't perfect or that they have messed up and as my fearless leader Gwen likes to say you can't shine a lot on somebody else's path without shining a little light on your own okay how true is that so if you were one of those shine a little light on somebody else's path and you'll shine some on your own okay if you were described as organized methodical strategic, neat. Uh, let's see, Carol Lou said something up here that kind of fit in that. Let me see. Oh, Debbie says, when you have to do your own annual review evaluations, then you get used to doing it. Uh, let's see, Carol Lou said, oh, let's see, Hattie said trustworthy, dependable. Sherry said sturdy. Where was that one that Carol Lou said that I want responsible? Okay, so if it's things like organized, methodical, strategic, responsible, um, hard working, something like that. Can you say tracking pro? If you're organized, that makes you the perfect person to pre-plan some meals and maybe even get them tracked the night before. Um, if you, a meal prep team leader, I mean, think about it. If you are organized, you organize or methodical, strategic in your planning, then you could actually get a group of other ladies or men together and maybe do some meal prep planning. Maybe you could make them together. You would be perfect for that. Um, it, are you neat? If you're a neat person, you can try getting, when you get home, get all of your fruits and veggies washed, prepped, and put away in clear containers so you can reach for something that's low or zero points and, you know, in, when life gets hairy. So if life gets messy and you're neat, you can make it pre-neat by getting all of that done. So organized, methodical, strategic, neat tops, you know, those, those are all fantastic qualities to help you know, to help other people and yourself to get, you know, to get prepared, you know, for when times don't go just like they should, you know, and like this morning, we weren't expecting to have, you know, six o'clock in the morning. I wasn't expecting to have a, it was a cute, it was a cute skunk, by the way. We have, we have an extra couple of minutes. So let's just talk about how cute this skunk was. It was like this big. It had to be like a juvenile skunk, but that was not how our how our morning was supposed to go so i would say that john if i said this about the person that i care the most about i would say that john is very organized john is very methodical john is very strategic in how he handles things so while i'm running around trying to find what's the best thing to clean the dog with you know whatever john was the perfect person to say okay give me the baby i'm gonna go get casey i'm gonna wake up Alyssa." I'm going to get you ready. So here's some um, water to rinse him off with after you get him washed. Here's this, here's this, here's this. You go home and do this. I'll go do this. I'll do this and this and this and this. Okay. So being organized, methodical, strategic, you know, I mean, it helped. So that helped me because I would have still been running around in the yard trying to figure out what to do, you know, but somebody that's described in that way, you know, helped when life got messy. They, you know, they helped to get it back on track. And then lastly, if you were described as creative, talkative, adventurous. If you were given one of those type strengths, then you're right at my alley. So I used to think that those were not strengths. I used to think that those were distractions, that they were weaknesses. I used to think that the, you know, not liking to meal prep and wanting to have something different all the time, you know, I thought that was a weakness instead of a strength, but it's not. It's totally a strength. So once you embrace the squirrel, so once you can embrace that and use it to, you know, to be creative and create new and exciting meals for your friends and family, to keep it exciting for other people, 
to coach or mentor other people because your mind is always going towards the, what are we doing now? 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 Um, and if you can color, if you're in this group, you might color outside of your tracker box, which means you don't have to have all neat rows of blue dots. You just don't. Um, you know, you might be the perfect person to keep this journey exciting for yourself and for those that are around you. So, you know, those are also strengths. So just think about that. I want you to think about some words that somebody else might use to describe you or, you know, or yourself. And your homework for this week is gonna go right along with that and it's going to be flex yourself. Hashtag flex yourself. And this is the last week for flexing things, okay? So hashtag flex yourself, self, F-L-E-X, Y-O-U-R-S-E-L-F. And honestly, I'm seriously just trying to stump Casey on these badges, okay? So flex yourself. She she did it on flex your flexibility. She nailed it. I never thought she would think of anything, but flex yourself is your homework. And I want you to go ahead and fill in that sentence. You know, so-and-so is very whatever, whatever. It's a, has to be a positive adjective. Remember, not crabby, whiny, you know, whatever. It has to be something positive, you know, like is very cheerful, is very helpful, is very organized, is very supportive. Something, you know, something positive. Thank you, Lynn, for posting the uh, homework for this week. Um, and then I want you, so I want you to post that. So I want you to post like, Lynn is very helpful. So I would say Lynn is not only very helpful, Lynn is extremely helpful. I don't know if y'all notice how many times I say her name in an evening or how many times we say her name in our Facebook group, but let's just use Lynn as an example. I'll do Lynn's homework for her right now. So Lynn is very helpful. Lynn is also very supportive. So we will say she is helpful and supportive. Um, and then I want you to tell us though, so when you fill in your blanks, so when you say, insert your name is very, whatever your positive adjective is gonna be, Tell us that, but then I want you to tell us how that is going to, and she is very inspirational too, Carol, I know, but I want you to tell us how that's gonna help you on your journey. So I know for a fact that Lynn posting every day, so she posts all, her and uh, Karen post almost every day something um, uplifting, um, something inspirational, um, something, that, something that's just that's just gonna lift everybody up. They're always really either super cute or pretty or a lot of butterflies and flowers and Snoopies for Karen. Um, but I know for a fact that posting that every day, it helps Lynn on her journey too, okay? Remember that shining a light? Remember what Gwen said, if you shine a light on other people, you have to shine a little bit of light on yourself. You can't do it without shining a light on yourself. And I know for a fact that shining that light on other people, that shines a light on Lynn too. So Lynn, your, your homework's done. You don't even have to do your homework. I just did it for you. But that is your homework for this week is hashtag flex yourself. And I just want you to top out your name. See, I knew it. I just want you to top out your name. So like in Lynn's case, Lynn is very helpful, supportive, inspirational, um, and how it's gonna help her on her journey because it's gonna just feeds right back. All that inspiration just feeds right back into her too. So do your homework. Don't forget to tag me. So you're going to tag me on Instagram. It's just at if you have an egg. If it is here on Facebook, it is going to be um, in this chat. It's going to be at if you have an egg. Or if you're over in the um, Facebook group, the if you have an egg Facebook group. Um, which, by the way, if you didn't know, that's a closed Facebook group. Ju that just means there is no initiation. You don't have to do anything except answer three simple questions to be let in. But it's a closed group just so that we don't have any like lurkers or people who don't need to be there. There. So um, that is over on if you have an egg. So if you go there, um, just do your homework and I will see it. Okay. Whew. So we're at the 30 minute mark. If you have never been with us before, this is an hour long chat. And we always talk about whatever WW or Weight Watchers talked about the previous week. And yes, Andrew, it is time to drink some water. So at the 30 minute mark, um, I go ahead and put on my trusty apron so that Casey knows how to divide these up for, um, for YouTube. So if you're watching this later on YouTube and you think, ah, I don't really wanna watch the whole hour, you'll know, no apron means that we are doing classroom portion and apron means that we are doing if we're going to be cooking if we're going to be talking about um if we're going to be talking about you know something fun if it's you know if it's not the if it's not the classroom portion you know it's sometimes you know it's usually something fun for the second half so that's how you know also at the 30 minute mark everybody stop right now so julie just started the water challenge this the water challenge is going to be for august and september over on if you have an egg so ma i agreed to sign up for 60 well, okay after 
my first cup of coffee, okay? Then I agreed to sign up for 60 ounces of plain water so that I can earn back, I can add back my one point for water before I switch to anything else. So before I switch to crystal light or diet lemonade or skim milk or unsweet tea or something like that, 60 ounces of water. So everybody stop right now and go ahead and drink your water here at the 30 minute mark. Okay, so we can all do with some water, okay? Everybody can use some water. So this is the second half of, I already forgot what the chat number was, chat number 283, and we've been talking about how to use, um, how to find and use your own strengths. So I think it was pretty clear that one of my strengths um, is creativity. So I mean, I think that people would say Kelly is very creative. I think sometimes it's a curse and sometimes it's a blessing sometimes the creative part in me does make me do that squirrel and I'll run down a rabbit trail a squirrel trail whatever you want to call it um and sometimes I'll forget to circle back but I also think though that that is a strength that I have that helps me to be creative and think of some of these things that we do every week okay so this week we are still talking about ways even though we're winding in the summer we are still talking about ways um to save money. So this um, the summer of savings, we've been doing this all summer long. I think this is the sixth week, maybe fifth or sixth week, fifth or sixth week that we have talked about ways to save money because well, let's face it. I mean, unless you were just like, I don't know, independently wealthy and somebody left you a bazillion dollars. I think all of us have figured out, hey, 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 I got to slow down just a little bit this summer because these prices are getting crazy and they don't look like they're going to get any better anytime soon. So we've been talking about ways to save money. Um, oh, that's great, Lynn. Um, but uh, anyway, so we've been talking about ways to save money to save money this summer. This week, we're going to do a three day shop your pantry challenge. So it's been a few months since I have actually gone through and shopped my pantry. For, when I say shop your pantry, I'm talking about pantry, freezer, fridge, where, wherever you keep food. So it's been a while since I've gone through and shopped mine. Um, I think this is a great way to save money to, by using what you already have. We did talk about that last week. We were talking about um, ways to not or to lessen food waste. And several of you nailed it. Several of you said, well, just eat what you have. So eliminate food waste by eating what you already have um, and save money by eating what you already have. So this week we're talking about three, we're having uh, having a three day shop your pantry challenge. So. Um, I'm going to show you some of the things that I found in my pantry, some of the things that I'm going to make for this week, and some of the things that I'm going to have for this week. Um, for So for this week's money-saving idea, we're going to go shop our own pantries, freezer, refrigerator, you know, whatever. I'm pointing at myself too, okay? So it's not just you. I'm pointing at me. And, um, oh, hold on a second. Oh, Debbie says, new way to save money. She has a meat slicer, and she started buying turkey breast at Sam's and slices her own deli meat. What? So how much of you say, let's see, four, for, yeah, for sandwiches, she gets three pounds of meat now instead of one pound for the same price. What? That, whoops, that is fantastic. I'll go ahead and lock that right now. Um, But we live in a land of plenty, okay? Almost too plentiful. Um, it's made a lot of us, and I am pointing at myself, it's made a lot of us lazy about eating what we already have on hand because it's it's not what I want right now, or it's boring, or I wanted something different to eat. Okay, I'm pointing at myself too. So this sometimes, sometimes we live where it's too plentiful and we don't have to eat what we already have. So for three days only, just three days, three days, for just three days, I'm asking you to step back from your land of plenty and eat what you already have and not buy anything else new, okay? No new groceries for, for only three days. Okay, so for this challenge, I'm making a list of things that I already have in my pantry, my refrigerator, my freezer, whatever, and I'm only gonna make meals from what is already on hand. So no new groceries, none, for the next three days. Not gonna go get anything, not gonna go across the street, not gonna go to a restaurant, only what I already have for the next three days. Um, and not only is this going to save money, um, but it's going to help me with my goal to eliminate food, you know, to further eliminate food waste. Um, and I've already found things, I already found things that were there 
from the last time that I did a shop your pantry and I forgot. I forgot that I had it. Okay, yeah, and Carol Lou says her family calls it living off the land. And her husband says they have more food than the grocery store. Seriously, yeah, totally. Like uh, this three day challenge, I could probably do a three month challenge. Maybe not three month, well, probably. I could probably do three months, at least three weeks and not ever miss it. So this is just for three days. So here's the beginning of my list, okay? Because I am gonna stick something in the air fryer. So I'm gonna run through my list real quick, real quick, the beginnings of my list real quick, and then I'll flesh it out a little bit. So just off the top of my head, without even opening the door, I knew that I had frozen ground chicken. I have four pound, four one pound bags of frozen ground chicken. And thank you, Julie, for sharing, the, you know, telling me the secret to how to make that. We'll circle back around to that in just a second. I have frozen blackberries. I have frozen corn. I have frozen peas. I have canned green beans. I have canned green beans. I have canned any kind you can think of beans. I have pasta of all shapes and sizes, and I'll show you some of those here in a second. I have pumpkin frozen in half cup um, servings from Super Cubes. I have marinara frozen in half cup, cup servings that I did in the Super Cubes. I have unmarked soup. What is up with that? I've been fussing at you all about marking things. I found unmarked soup. I think I know what it is, but what? Can I not practice what I preach? Anyway, unmarked soup in one cup servings um, that I had made in the Super Cubes. I have fat-free ricotta cheese that I forgot I had. I have shredded Velveeta cheese, a nearly dead end-of-season tomatoes, which we're going to work on first, non-fat plain Greek yogurt, fat-free cream cheese, blah, 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 blah. There's tons more, okay? So the first thing we're going to do is get rid of those, not get rid of them, we're going to get them ready, those end-of-season tomatoes. So I've talked about these before. Um, I had some, these are like end of the season tomatoes. So that one still looks pretty good, right? This one already has a moldy spot on it, but we're going to get rid of that. And then this one, you know, doesn't look fantastic. Okay, so my mother, y'all haven't been here for a while, my mother was vegan and she was very much into making sure that she used all of her fruits and you know all of her vegetables everything out of her garden and so this was one of her recipes was to take it was to take whatever tomatoes were left at the end of the season the ones that were looking kind of janky and and you thought oh, wow that just didn't you know that really doesn't look too good and go ahead and make something out of it so these are the last of the janky tomatoes and so all i'm doing on this first one i'm just trimming off where it was starting to get icky and then I'm gonna cut it into slices. And so these don't have to be pretty. These don't have to be pretty. Uh, Sylvia, we have had so much rain that the tomatoes are, the tomatoes and the, the gourds that we have outside are, are outside are ginormous. They are huge because we've had, we have had so much rain this year. And I'm just gonna put these in a, in an air fryer safe pan, but my mom used to make these every year and I'm not a big, I'm not a big, um, you know, like just eat it by itself, tomato eater. Whew, Dusty still stinks. Shoo, 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 shoo. He still stinks. Um, like I, I don't, I'm not that person that just picks up tomatoes and eats them. My mom totally would have. But you know, even at the end of the season, they still get kind of janky. So I'm just gonna cut these up real quick and put them in a, I'm putting them in an air fryer safe pan. My mom would bake these in the oven but for the sake of time, we're gonna put them in an air fryer safe pan. Okay, so that's about it because the rest of them are, um, the rest of them are, you know, a little icky, you know, probably need to be gotten rid of. Then you just spritz them with a little bit of olive oil and you can do this in the oven. You do not have to do this in an air fryer them with a little bit of olive oil. I'm going to sprinkle just a little bit of nutritional yeast on there. You do not have to use your nutritional yeast, but y'all know I use it on everything. My mom always put some kind of sweetener on there. And that was something else that I had in my, already had in my pantry, so I'm going to put that on there. And it just makes them taste more like candy if you do that. And then some seasoning. Okay, so since I just put a little bit of sugar on there, I think I'm going to switch. I'm going to switch the seasoning I'm going to use to 
This is Salt Free Dax and it's Red Mountain Rub. And it has just a little bit of a sweet flavor and it is really good on bacon. So we're gonna put that on there. So that's already gonna save me some money from not throwing away these tomatoes. So here's number one, end of season tomatoes. Don't throw them away. The little bits and baubles that are left over, I'm gonna put out in the yard for the critters. But you're just gonna pop those in the microwave. You're gonna pop those in the air fryer or in the oven. And we're gonna do those on 380 for about 15 minutes, depending on, it's gonna depend on how big the tomatoes are and you know how much, how well you want them done. Um, okay, so end of season tomatoes, that was one thing that I already had. Um, I've got some yellow squash at home that needs to be done. That will be pan roasted. Um, I've got every shape of pasta known to man. I don't know why I have all this pasta. I've got 100% whole wheat angel hair pasta. Oops. I almost killed Dusty with a thing of applesauce. Let me grab that. I've got this kind of pasta. I have Fuzili uh, from Trader Joe's. I have more pasta. Ooh, let's see, Karen says if I had a pie crust, I could make a tomato pie. Hmm, maybe. Um, but I've got all these different kinds of pasta, and so I'm thinking, hmm, I could probably use after these tomatoes are cooked, I could use them to make some spaghetti. And remember, and I'm not gonna go get it because it's in the freezer, but I have I have um, marinara that I had extra marinara that I had one day, and I poured it into the super cubes that I have shown you all a hundred times, so I did not bring one out tonight. I poured them in the half cup super cubes and froze them. Okay, I'll go get it. I'll go get it just because you need to see it. Hold on just a second for me. Do not go anywhere. Just in case you have not seen one of the super cubes chats. I will show it to you. So this is marinara. That is marinara sauce. And I just put it into the half cup size super cube, super cubes, let them freeze. And then after they freeze, pop them out and then put them into a, um, Linda says we won't get kidnapped. Thank you. Um, and, and then put them in a freezer bag. And that way, if you need a half a cup of marinara, you just pull one of those out, heat it up and you can go. So I'm thinking one of the knots, I might be using one of my assorted things of pasta, one of the half cups of um, frozen marinara that I have, some of these tomatoes, some of these tomatoes that I'm cooking right now, um, and maybe some of the frozen ground chicken that I have. Let's circle back around to the chicken real quick. So, um, gosh, Julie, and seems like there was somebody else. Maybe Debbie, I don't remember, but Julie for sure, and, De and then Deanna had talked about doing, um, like finding chicken and they were appalled and I don't disagree with them but they were appalled at how much brown chicken was at the store and so Julie bought just chicken breasts with nothing else in it no additives no fillers no seasonings no nothing so she just bought chicken breasts and then she ground her own and so I did some of that um, a couple of days ago and I have started a video for that and I will show you how to make those later but it was so stinking easy it wasn't even funny okay like top 10 easiest things that i have ever done um but i'm thinking that would be a good idea i also have tuna i have lots of tuna and this happens to be albacore wild tuna they also have skipjack um, from wild planet um, we'll talk about that another day because these are all sustainable wild caught pole caught so you know they're not using nets to fish for that i always have nutritional yeast i've pulled that back out I have some pimentos, and I mentioned earlier that I have um, I have shredded Velveeta, and I have some non-fat plain Greek yogurt. So I'm thinking I might try making some pimento cheese. You know, at some point this week, I have these little, I have several of these little kosher um, dill petite things. So I'm thinking, hmm, how fun would that be? Oh, these tortillas. I always have tortillas. So I was thinking, hmm, how fun would it be then to take a tortilla, the shredded Velveeta, or if I make it into pimento cheese, some of the tuna, or if I've cooked some of the ground chicken, um, melt that cheese on there, melt it in the air fryer, use one of the tomatoes, make me a tuna melt, a tuna melt with tomatoes, 
and have some little pickles with it because I already have those. I need to eat those. I have cans of green beans everywhere. Apparently, I needed to stock up on these at one time. I have cans of green beans. I have green beans. Oh, let me get my hand up here. I have green beans that we've canned, you know, in the canner. I have those kinds of green. I have green beans everywhere. Um, I also have, yeah, blackberries everywhere. So I've got plenty of food, okay? Plenty to eat. Okay, while those are cooking, let's make something else. Um, I also have applesauce, little containers of applesauce. That would be great with that tuna melt if I make those. But I also said that I had done um, pumpkin. So when I open a can of pumpkin, I used to end up throwing away part of it because I would open it, I would use however many third of a cups or half of a cups or whatever that I needed and I never would finish the rest of it and it would get really icky really fast. So also in the super cubes, and I have these over here thawing out, also in the super cubes, instead of, instead of um, opening the can and then just using what I needed and then chucking the rest of it, I don't know if you can tell because I've, I've defrosted them, but these are also in the half cup super cubes. When I opened, um, when I've been opening a can of pumpkin now, I go ahead and just, I use what I'm going to use, and then I put the rest of it into the half cup super cubes and freeze it so that I have it. So another thing that I'm going to make real quick, let me go ahead and get this started. So this is just regular pumpkin. It's not pumpkin pie mix. It's just regular pureed pumpkin. And again, instead of throwing away half of it, froze it in the super cubes. I'm going to go ahead and make some overnight oats for this week. So y'all know I like to do different things. We already talked about the fact that I'm creative. So for this week, I'm going to do something different. And Casey has got me all excited about the start of um, pumpkin spice season. And I know it's still hot outside, but we are going to pretend like it's here. So you do not have to have any size jar in particular. You can do, you know, any kind of mason jar. You can do any kind of, um, gosh, you can do mason jar. You can do um, a plastic container. You can do a bowl. You can do whatever you want. Remember that for overnight oats, you need, you need old fashioned oats. You do not want quick cook oats. And I was, you know, when I was snooping around in my pantry, I thought, you know what? I've still got, without even opening what I've put up, what I've put up there, I have, I still have a half of a bag of old-fashioned oats from one of the other chats. So I'm going to make three kind of big things of overnight oats. And I'm going to make one teeny tiny one in case I just need it for a snack here um, at Casey Kitchen Center. And the recipe, all of my overnight oats recipes are already on if you have an egg.com. So this just takes regular old-fashioned oats. And then while I was snooping around, I found a packet of Devotion, Devotion Nutrition Sweet Potato Pie Protein Powder. So I'm going to add, and I'm just adding the dry ingredients to, you know, to these. So this is protein powder that was just sitting here. It was just sitting there. Who knows when I was going to use it? I don't know when I was planning on using it, but now that, look, it's used now, okay? So I just used something. So I eliminated some food waste. I'm gonna do that. Then I've got chia seeds. So I'm gonna put about a half a teaspoon of chia seeds in each one. Not so many in this little tiny jar. And I'll put a little bit more in that jar. That'll be for a bigger meal here, you know, here at Casey Kitchen Center. And then I'm gonna mix the dry ingredients together real quick. these are all things that I already have here on hand that I already had here on hand then I'm gonna add to that the pumpkin and again this was just pureed pumpkin straight out of a can put it into a super cube and froze it I did it the, the half a cup super cube put it in there and we're gonna get ready for pumpkin spice season and dole that out. So here, just while we're having the chat, I will have four breakfasts or lunches ready by the time that we get done. 
So there is that. I'm going to add just a tiny bit of sweetener to each one of them. And notice I'm not measuring. I'm not doing, I mean, this isn't even a teaspoon of the sweetener. It's probably about a half of a teaspoon of the sweetener. And then to that, again, these recipes are all already on if you have an egg.com. To that, I'm going to add some non-fat plain Greek yogurt. And if I was measuring this out, it would be a, about a third of a cup. Wow, sorry for the very loud noise. It would be about a third of a cup of that. And that just really helps it to thicken up. And again, I did not think I liked overnight oats. So where are my you overnight oats people? Because I know that there are some of you here. I really, really thought that I did not like these. And I, when I, the first couple of times I made them, I kept thinking, what is up with this? These things are nasty. I did not like them. I didn't like the texture of them. And I just really couldn't, I just couldn't imagine what anybody was talking about. You know, why? I just didn't know why they liked them. And once I switched to the regular oats, so once I switched to regular old-fashioned oats instead of the quick cook oats, made all the difference in the world. And then... I had one container of the core power. Don't know what I was saving it for. But I'm going to add a little bit of it to each one. And then again, you just let these sit in the refrigerator overnight. I'm going to give each one of these a quick stir. Of course, they're going to be a little bit messy because I'm making them here, you know, in the container. But you can totally do this. You can mix these up. You could make this. These are going to all going to be pumpkin flavored. You can do, um, okay, Sandra loves overnight oats. Let's see. Caroline says she tried the overnight oats from a book. 30 grams of oats, 100 milliliters of skim milk, and I missed the rest of it. So I will go back and read that. But these are going to be, yeah, getting ready for pumpkin spice season. You could add chocolate chips to this if you wanted to. Okay, so Lynn's not a fan of overnight oats. So is it the texture, Lynn? Is it the taste? Have you tried it with the um, with the old-fashioned oats? Because I'm telling you, that made a huge difference for me. And sometimes if they end up just a little bit extra mushy, then I'll pop them in the microwave. Ooh, walnuts would be good. Yeah, so Sherry said walnuts. That would be really good in this. Yep, Lynn says it's texture. So Lynn, you might try it and then you might just try popping them. You might try popping them in the microwave right before you eat them. Ooh, Sylvia says cinnamon. That would be good too. Okay, let me give this last one a quick stir. And it may need just a teeny tiny bit more oats in it. Where did I put those? Just a little bit more oats. These, this is that's the one that's gonna be extra. It's going to be extra big. I'll probably have it like for lunch one day or something. Okay. So there's a little bit more oats in that one. And then, because I do like things to be different, I had some pumpkin seeds. Maybe. If I can get the container open. So I had some pumpkin seeds. So in one of these, I'm going to put pumpkin seeds. So now that's pumpkin overnight oats with some pumpkin seeds. Sylvia said cinnamon. So let's put some cinnamon in one of them. I'll put cinnamon in that one. Okay. I said chocolate chips. Let's see if we can find some chocolate chips. Here are some Lily's chocolate salted baking chips. So let's put those in one. Okay. So now I've got one that's just plain. So I have one that is just, wow, those smell good. Woo. So now I have one that is just plain overnight oats. I could put a little bit of whipping cream or something on there. I've got one that has cinnamon in it. I have one that has some chocolate salted caramel flavored baking chips. And I have one that has pumpkin seeds in it. So look, me, remember, Kelly is very, and I said creative. So Kelly is very creative in what? 
eight minutes. I just made four different kinds of pumpkin overnight oats. I used things that I already had. I didn't go buy anything. This, these are all things that I took out of the pantry, the freezer, the you know refrigerator, whatever, and they're gonna be ready to go. So these will be ready to go um, for, um, for work this week. They're gonna be yummy and fantastic. Saving some money. Mm, that tastes good. Saving some money and let's check on those tomatoes. Perfect timing. They had one minute left. So let me show you how these are looking before you all run off. Give me just a second because this is super hot. Remember, whatever temperature you have your air fryer on is what temperature the, temperature the food is going to be. So don't just grab it. And then there are those ugly, gangly tomatoes that we had. And look how pretty those are. Will that not be? I'm thinking those are going to go in some spaghetti. So I'm thinking, yeah, that some of this pasta with the ground chicken that Julie helped me make, I'm thinking that these tomatoes are going to go in some pasta or possibly on a tuna milk sandwich. Okay, but there you have it. Some perfect ways to use up things that you already have. Let's save money by shopping our own pantry. So I hope that you will join me in the three day pantry challenge. If you do, just go ahead and comment below that you're gonna join me. I would love to know what you found in your pantry. I'm serious, this is all helpful to other people. I know some of you were thinking, nobody wants to know what I have in my pantry. Yes, we do. Yes, we do, because just you all shouting out a couple of things, I added things. Like I think I may have some walnuts, so I might be adding walnuts to this one. Um, but just you all shouting out some things that you have or some things that you would do with these or, you know, ideas that you would have. Seriously, it's going to help all of us together. So I hope everybody will try something. I hope everybody will do the three-day challenge. Go ahead, you know, look in your, start looking in your pantry and your fridge, you know, decide what you're going to do. Post it because we would love to have some ideas, especially some money saving ideas. Um, but thank you again for being here. Everybody have a fantastic week. If you are watching this later on YouTube, please go ahead and let that next video roll over. It is youtube.com. Search if you have an egg. Um, and if you are, oh yeah, and Debbie says put some of those vital proteins, wait, those, put some of those in those oats. Yeah, I could do that. I could go back and add those too. Um, but y'all have a great week. I hope you will subscribe, sub subscribe, subscribe, and let that next video roll over um, and go ahead and click that bell so you'll know when we have our next video. But y'all have a great week and I will see you next time. Good night.